Welcome back to the treehouse, y'all. It's dog days. And I've been wanting to take out the crispy collector here lately because I haven't given it any attention this year. There's a good reason why that we're going to get to in a second. If you guys don't know who the crispy collector is, that is my 15 foot John boat. And I love to take it out and go catfishing and get up in the skinny water and stuff. But I've neglected it over the last year. I've been riding around in the silver bullet. Last time I took this boat out, the wheel was about to fall off going down the highway. I saw it, it was shaking like this. So I've limped it back and it's been just sitting. It was actually sitting at my dad's house. I just picked it up and I, uh, I just kind of limped it over here. And this, this wheel has a lot of play and that means that our, our hub, our bearings, something in there ain't right. And before I take this out anywhere, go to any lake, I need to fix it. By the way, you should probably check your hubs and your bearings at least annually on your trailers. I went ahead, I got some extra bearings, I got a replacement hub, I got an extra battery, I got new terminal replacements. We are gonna freshen up the crispy collector day and get it rolling again. So let's go. So I basically had this with like no grease in it, eventually dried out. And when you dry out, things get hot and there's problems. So you guys hear that? When I push that side to side, that thing is, it's going like this. So it's just creating a death wobble that's gonna get worse and worse and worse. So this is the worst one. We're gonna take this one off and we're gonna replace this entire hub. We gotta pack that grease in there. This is gonna be juicy. It's gonna be a juicy job. So something that I have gotten for my travels that is cheap and a really easy way to quickly jack up your trailer or your truck is I've got a little two ton um, scissor jack right here. But something I also keep in my truck is an impact uh, impact driver. And this allows you to change your tires out really quickly. I also use it on my camper, but just because I'm on the road so much, I got this little cheap um, impact driver off Amazon and I got this other deal, so check this out. There's a little attachment you need to work with that driver and um, I'll actually leave this on my Amazon links down in the description so you guys can go pick them up if you're riding around on a lot of trailers or truck camping or whatever. This is a nice little time saver. So let's get that on here and let's take this tire off. <laughs> comes the nasty part. So I'm gonna just tap this off to the side here. Might just come out. There it goes. That thing is destroyed. Not good. Yeah, you can see like rust and stuff in there. Alright, we're gonna have to get this little cotter pin out and find the castle nut. Oh, okay, here we go. Got our cotter pin. Oh. Now we should be able to just unscrew this by hand. Possibly not. Okay, I was able to get the nut off. It's definitely got some kinks in it does not feel right so now this whole thing should just come off okay let's check out the spindle make sure it's still spindly it actually doesn't look bad it looks good that's very good just a little concerned about what I'm seeing right here this threading looks damaged or something all right, I'm going to take some uh, some brake cleaner and I'm going to spray that that nut off and the spindle and get it all clean and then we'll take the uh, the new hub to get packed in with grease. All right, so after doing some inspecting, 
I think I figured out the problem. Now, this is just a menagerie of issues. You guys are gonna love this. So, this is the old hub that came off the boat. Let's see if I can focus here. This thing is so nasty and greasy. There's a little spot right there. Turn this up and get in there so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, there's a little spot right there. And so, and this actually looks bent. This whole ring looks bent. And the bearing went bad. I guess it caused this to go bad too. So we want that to be smooth as glass. Because I was thinking, oh, it'll be easy just to replace the bearings. And then I got to looking at that, I was like, no. I got, so I already got a new hub. So we're gonna put it on. It doesn't match whatsoever. That's why I wanted to just check that one and make sure it's okay. But it doesn't match. It's all right. It's part of the Crispy's character. Now check out this other gym. This boat did not come with bearing buddies. I know a lot of boats come with those. This has the axle spindles that have the little holes in them. So you can put grease through them and you can uh, grease your bearings that way. But last time I went to grease these puppies, I pulled out the uh, grease fitting, the Zerk, I think is what it's called. It goes in there and it's a a tap in it's not a, a screw in there's not really any threads right there so that needs to be replaced you pump your grease in there there's a hole here there's a hole on the other side there's a hole down there and that grease will filter through there also our threadings right here are a little wonky so i'm going to try to brush those out clean them up the best i can but that nut doesn't come off there very easily. But now we're gonna move on to a really fun part, which is packing the grease in. New hub, galvanized. So I got one just painted black and one straight up galvanized. Look at me go. And these are the bearings. This is what the bearings look like. So these are ungreased and I need to grease them. I think I know what grease feeding I need. Took a pair of calipers and it looked like 3 16 but you know how that goes. Now, I actually thought about getting the bearing buddies, and I've had those before in the past. They work pretty good. But, you know, I've got these spindles that have the, uh, the grease through um, system, and that, that's actually nice so you don't get as much grease on the back of your wheels. Those bearing buddies push a lot of grease. I'd rather just keep this system, plus I don't have to spend any more money with the bearing buddies. That little um, Cirque. Uh, grease fitting, it's like a dollar. A good solid dollop here. Fully lube it. Fully lube, get in there. Okay, now we're going to pack the bearing itself. So we'll take a dollop of this. Just put it in our hand. I've done this exactly zero times. So I'm just going off what I've learned on the internet in the last 48 hours. So I'm just gonna take this and push this in here until it squeezes out the top. Just do one little section at a time. I'm not really seeing this ooze out the top. It's really hoping for some oozing, but I'm hearing less rattling, that's probably good. You just haven't really lived your best life until you've hand-packed your own bearings, you know what I mean? It's that self-reliance that just makes you feel good inside. Boy, this baby can take some lube, let me tell you. Woo! Been packing her in for five minutes. She's still, she's still not uh, fully lubed. Let's just dunk it in here. Let's stick it right. Oh no, I'm getting grease everywhere. So this is the front, so I'm actually gonna flip this over. We'll drop this one in the back here. All right, let's go ahead and pack this other one while I still got super lubed hands. Okay, and we're dropping the other bearing into the top. Oh yeah. She feels thick. She's thick. All right, now I'm actually going to uh, de-glove here. Oh my gosh. 
All right, clean hands. Now, flip this back over. And we'll pop this seal in. This is the seal that goes on the back. So the inside of the tire that you don't see. I'm just gonna take a block of wood, hammer that baby in. So this is what it looks like, all said and done, pretty much. All right, so there's the back, it's sealed. Got the two bearings in there, and now I'm gonna slide this over the axle but then we'll put this cap on and then I can uh, grease it with a grease gun, which I should have done already, okay? I shouldn't be in this position right now because I, I did not take the proper maintenance precautions. All right, Crispy, here's your new leg, your new pair of shoes. Just gonna stick this right on here. goes. The bearing just fell out. We'll push it in. There it goes. Rotation. Very nice. Okay. Now we can uh, put that castle nut back on here. All right. So I hand tightened it. Now we're going to throw this cotter pin back in. We can get it back in. There she blows. I'm gonna snip that cotter pin because it's still full length. And now we just have to go get uh, one of those zerks put in there and we should be able to lube it up. After hours of figuring it out, we finally have a tire on here that is spinning fairly straight. I just spun my other one and it looks wobbly. The hub looks good, but it, it's spinning wobbly, so I don't know. Well, you know, we're, we're definitely gonna have to uh, do some secondary maintenance, maintenance on the Crispy down the road. But main thing is when I am pressing on this tire, there's, there's no play. There's no play in the hub and that's exactly what we want. Next step, is replacing the battery and the terminals. So what happened was I left the plug in, it rained, and the boat basically filled up with water. Killed the terminals, rusted out the battery, everything. What I'm doing is I've clipped off the ends here and we're going to be replacing those. Got the positive done, so we're gonna do the negative now. I'm just gonna take my knife and cut through all the rubberized stuff. Get to the wire. I'm not sure what gauge this is. It looks like eight or seven, something weird. It's actually not labeled on the wire, so I don't know. But I found something that's pretty close to it. A little copper attachment for the battery terminal. So we'll place that on there and we'll pinch it down. Definitely not the prettiest thing ever, but it'll work. I got this nifty little tool. I'll leave this uh, linked in my, my little Amazon store. I use this all the time in the garage for heat shrink. And then obviously this little torch too, just for garage stuff. But you put this little sleeve on and it disperses the heat around this this little shield up here that way you're not just burning right through the the heat shrink all right there's one all right there we go now need a new battery pick this bad boy up from tractor supply today it's a, it's a deep cycle because I'm, I'm probably gonna hook it up to my trolling motor as well. All right, just for testing, make sure our wires are correct. 
see what we got. Oh yeah. Ho oh, oh. ho! Can't stop the crispy baby. Heck yeah, boys. That's the best thing that's happened all day. You ever just get into a project and like one thing leads to another, leads to another? You can't figure out anything. That has been today. But we'll hook this up and uh, I'm probably gonna have to replace the other terminals. They look pretty bad. She's crusty, but she's running y'all. Lights are working. The trolling motor sort of works. There's only one thing left to do and you know what that is. Let's go give her a rip for the first time in a long time. Trailer is feeling and looking smooth, y'all. This is it. Moment of truth for the crispy. To ride again. 7.30 in the morning. About 90 degrees. Sun laser beam. Absolute laser beam. It feels like the fishing should be done right now. But we're here to rip. We're here to rip the crispy. I really have no fishing agenda. I have seen a couple, it looks like little white bass scootering around. This is what we're here for right now. It's been, I'm gonna say probably seven or eight months since we've run this motor. Electric start, 25 horse, four stroke Merc. Let me hear it now. Come on, let me hear it now. There she blows. Yes, sir. I've got to burn some of this old gas out of here, so let's go rip some waves. Let's give her a rip, boys. Oh, yeah. The old crispy man, she'll just about rattle your teeth out if you're not holding your mouth right. Something that I definitely want to add on here is some electronics. Put them right here. Just something really basic, but also have like a, a little mount where I can put my, my phone and use my Garmin Active Captain because I've, I've just got so many waypoints from fishing in the Silver Bullet that I can just correspond it right here or get a little Garmin unit with some GPS, something basic, but you know, nothing crazy. Maybe a little live scope. I don't know. My main purpose for this boat is to bass fish in nasty places and then bring the meat. I mean, it's about getting the crispies. Um, in particular, catfish. You know, when I go catfishing, they're they're gooey, they're nasty. Um, I've got these jug lines here that I worked up last night, and I'm. I've got an idea for some new jug lines. I think I'm going to make a bunch of them and get a little uh, container for them and, and dial that in. I've got a, I've got a good idea. I think it's a good idea that will work really well and be super cheap and basic and, and easy to operate. And I basically want to just keep that rigging in this boat and not have to move it. So anytime I want to go catfishing, I just take this boat out and uh, you know drop my jugs, uh, drop some lines. I've already got some pole mounts on the back, so. She's set up. She's set up and she's running good. I'm surprised this fuel is running as good as it is.
We have reached the end of the road on fixing up our crispy collector. Felt good to get it out of the water, rip it. Got me inspired to actually do a couple things, uh, not spend too much money, but just do some little fix ups uh, and really make this John boat pop uh, and some performance things. Uh, part of my problem with this uh, this Merc is I have a long shaft and I have a, sh a short transom. So I have a lot of drag in the water, it just doesn't, uh, just doesn't perform very well. So. A couple fixes to that, I could get a new engine you know, try to find one, maybe swap this one out or something. That would be a giant pain, or I could uh, get a jack plate. So that's something I'm thinking about. And our little Zerk fitting finally came in for putting our in our grease. So this is the final nail in the crispy coffin today. So we're gonna try to hammer this baby in. Oh, wow. Completely not the right fitting. Just when I thought I had things kind of figured out. I was, I was getting with the program. No. I don't know what size it is, but it ain't 3 six sinks. It's just gonna add to my collection of extra parts that I order off Amazon that uh, I just keep for a rainy day. Well, you know what they say about boats, y'all. Stands for breakout another thousand. So true, so true. But thank you guys for hanging with me today and stay tuned for more outdoor action here at the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you on the next one.